When Sins of a Solar Empire first burst onto the real-time strategy scene in 2008, it conquered the hearts of thousands with its unique mix of civilization building and real-time space battles. Four years later, it's still one of the best strategy experiences available on the market, and Rebellion steps up the already impressive ante with new ships, graphical updates, and an armada of tweaks. As a standalone expansion, it's the perfect package for newcomers, but are these features enticing enough for veterans to join the Rebellion? As with Sins of a Solar Empire and its two mini-expansions, Rebellion's sheer variety of tasks can seem overwhelming at first. Amassing a fleet of warships and sending them into battle is but one aspect of this sweeping epic. You also explore and colonize new planets, collect resources, engage in diplomacy, build an infrastructure, and establish trade routes, often at the same time. It all requires monumental feats of multitasking that leads to matches lasting anywhere from 20 minutes to several hours. But it's a credit to the development team that it never grows too complex to handle. Instead of tossing a new faction into the existing mix of TEC, Vasari, and Advent, Rebellion splits the existing factions into Rebel and Loyalist camps with differing abilities. The concept's comparative lack of thematic variety initially seems disappointing, but it's easier to accept once you realize that each faction has at least one doozy of a unique special ability that makes up for it. Loyalist TEC forces, for instance, can fire a cannon that wreaks havoc on distant gravity wells. TEC rebels can convince annoying pirates to fight by their side, and Viseri loyalists have a Galactus-like ability to devour entire planets. Somehow, owing to an intricate but intuitive system of checks and balances, such skills rarely seem as imbalanced as they could. It's also a scenario that's ripe for a single-player campaign, full of betrayals and political intrigue among the three factions. But players who have long waited for a dose of story in Sins of a Solar Empire won't find much besides decent cutscenes and snippets of lore scattered about menu screens. It's a shame, because it's hard to relate to the factions aside from admiration for their respective abilities. Even though Ironclad still hasn't done much with the story, they've improved almost every one of the available civilian and military research trees. This includes a much-wanted makeover of the previously flawed diplomacy tree, which now grants shareable bonuses for the two parties involved. If you're new to Sins of a Solar Empire, keep in mind that its gameplay is every bit as complex as it sounds. A new set of extensive tutorials and one of the most intuitive user interfaces in strategy gaming softens Sins' learning curve a bit, but you'll still want to get comfortable with the robust, single-player skirmishes before you jump online and battle with the veterans. Just be prepared for what feels like an inconsistent AI. While the brutally intelligent AI in Sins' previous releases felt perfectly balanced, the AI in Rebellion often facilitates between ridiculously easy to ridiculously hard. If you're a veteran, you'll find that nothing alters the gameplay of Sins of a Solar Empire so much as the introduction of Titans and Corvettes, which disrupt all of the comfortable strategies involving the existing capital ships, cruisers, and frigates you may have built up over the years. Corvettes may be cheap, versatile fighters that dwarf even frigates in size, but they can harry larger targets and pack a considerable punch in large numbers. The massive and expensive Titan, on the other hand, can wreak the havoc of a Death Star on entire flotillas and grant buffs to friendly ships. But don't get the idea that your Titan is some imbalanced god machine. As with almost everything else in Sins, you'll need to allow a lot of time for your faction to build its own version of these plotting dreadnoughts. Even then, Titans don't get powerful until they've engaged in many battles, and you can usually count on your enemies bombarding the construction platform until the moment it's finished. After all, if you're playing another player, they're constantly warned of your Titan's imminent completion via a timer. It's little touches like this that make Rebellion more enjoyable than its predecessors, particularly since they add an extra element of tension to the franchise's comparatively slow pace of gameplay. Sins of a Solar Empire has never looked better thanks to extensive graphical updates and the welcome addition of shadows adds a degree of grandeur that was absent in the original game. Zoom in far enough on your fleet's battles and the combined shadows and new higher resolution textures allow combat to achieve something approaching cinematic intensity. It's even better when you turn off the interface and sit back and watch the carnage you've begun. That's not to say that Sins as a whole isn't starting to look its age after four years, but the models have aged well nevertheless, and any further tinkering might have ruined the ease with which you can zoom in on ships and then zoom out to a full view of the system. Unfortunately, the sound apparently hasn't received much attention at all, and it's regrettable that Ironclad didn't at least work in some more music among the merely passable voiceovers and sound effects. 
Make no mistake, Rebellion is every bit as fun as its predecessor, and its additions provide the best experiences the multiplayer mode has seen to date. If you've never experienced Sins of the Solar Empire before, you'll find no better entry point than Rebellion. But if Rebellion commits any sins of its own, it's in the $40 price tag, which seems excessive for an expansion that will almost certainly strike its loyal fans as little more than a meaty content patch. If you're willing to take the financial plunge, however, you'll find that Ironclad has pulled off the rare feat of fiddling with the classics gameplay without leaving behind the feeling that something was lost in the process.